In this video, we are going to be looking at the second type of phenotypic variation, which is referred to as discontinuous variation. Now, discontinuous variation is quite straightforward. It's not as complicated as continuous variation in the previous video. So what exactly is that all about? Now, discontinuous variation is what happens when the differences are more qualitative, not quantitative. So it's based on the quality of the phenotype. It's usually something that does not have to be measured. All right. As an example, blood type. Uh, one person has blood type A and one person has blood type B. You will never ask the person who has more blood type. That question does not make sense. When it came to quantitative differences, in the example of height, you can ask who has more height and who has less height or who has more weight and who has less weight, right? Or who is darker and who is lighter in their skin color. But when it comes to blood type, you don't ask the question who has more blood type and who has less blood type. That question sounds ridiculous. What you do is you see the quality of the blood type. One person has blood type A with A-type glycolipids on the cell surface membrane of the red blood cells and the blood type B has B-type glycolipids on the cell surface membrane of the red blood cells. You don't have to memorize that. Don't worry about that glycolipid part. So it's non-measurable in this case. You don't have to measure it. Right? Number two, the categories are very distinct. Remember, distinct means it's extremely obvious that there is a difference. A person with blood type A and a person with blood type B will have differences. Now, you might argue and say that when blood spills, when you see the blood, you will not be able to tell whether a person has blood type A or blood type B. But we can do extremely simple tests in the clinic or in the hospital, or sometimes even in the lab, by the way, to determine what blood type the person has. So we don't have to go through the test, but the point I'm trying to make is, it is a very obvious difference between their phenotypes. Another very important thing to also understand is, there will usually be no intermediates or no in-between phenotypes between the categories. For example, a person with blood type A and a person with blood type B uh, that is, those are the two phenotypes. There are no intermediates. Now, some students will immediately say, hey, wait a second, there is an in-between, which is blood type AB. Now, that's a good argument, but is there a person then between A and AB? Is there a person who exists between AB and B then? Okay, that's what it's meant as no intermediate. A person with blood type AB will have those A-type glycolipids and B-type glycolipids on their cell surface membrane. So there are no intermediates that exist between A and AB, and there are no intermediates that, all, that also exist between AB and B. There are no people with A with a little bit of B, uh, B with a little bit of A. No, it's not. The categories are just as A, AB, or B. And of course, there's also blood type O as well. So those are the four categories. They are very distinct and there are no in-betweens or intermediates. Now, for the genetic basis of discontinuous variation, it is very simple. Most of the time, the reason why you will have these limited phenotypes, it's not in a range, uh, you'll only have a limited phenotype. The reason is because it's usually caused by just one gene. It's not polygenes, okay? There can be some discontinuous variation which is caused by two genes, but the point is very little genes affect the phenotype in this case. And a lot of times also, discontinuous variation is not affected by the environment. As an example, the gene that affects blood type, which we have seen in the previous chapter, the gene has three alleles, IA allele, IB allele, and IO allele, where if you have the IA allele, will produce a very special type of glycolipid. We just call it glycolipid A in this case. IB produces glycolipid B, which makes it blood type B. IO will produce a rather deformed sort of glycolipid, where the glycolipid does not have an A or B shape to it. And therefore, based on this example here, there are no antigens on the IO. That is why O blood type usually can be donated to other people. 
So the alleles will have a large effect on the phenotype. Those blood types are easily distinguished with each other with specific types of tests. And more importantly as well, the discontinuous variation over here, the blood type is not affected by the environment. An example of questions that we can see over here. Now, to keep things very simple, I'm just going to read through the highlighted part. Steelhead trout are fish that live in streams in North America. They were farming the fish and they put the fish in a tank and each tank may have up to 50,000 fish. The young captive fish are fed processed food. Some young fish are unable to survive these conditions and a proportion die. Death is usually the result of poor wood healing after accidents due to overcrowding and due to spread of diseases. So because the fish are all in a tight space, they might hit each other and then they might cause injury on the body. So fish that have poor healing abilities, that means their wounds heal very slowly, they will die faster. Fish that heals faster, they will have a higher survival rate. So name the expected pattern of variation in wound healing ability in a population of fish. So some fish will have a slower wound healing ability. Some fish will have a faster wound healing ability. So right off the bat, this is measurable. You can see how long it takes for them to heal. Number two, it's usually in a range because some fish heal slower, some have average healing, some fish have faster healing. So the moment it's in a range and it's measurable, we can know that this is continuous variation. In another case here, the interpupillary distance is the distance in millimeters between centers of the pupils of the eyes. Figure 2.1 shows how the IPD is measured or the interpupillary distance is measured. Now, in this case, there's variation. So you have people who have 50 millimeters IPD and you have people who have 80 millimeters IPD. It's quite far apart. But there are also people who exist in between. There are people who are at 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. That means that there are many intermediates. So right off the bat, it's measurable. It's in a range. It's many intermediate. We know that this is continuous variation. Another one here, figure 4.1 shows part of a maize cob. The cob is made up of many individual seeds called kernels. This is the one that we will usually take to make popcorns. Each kernel results from a separate fertilization of male and female gamete. Some kernels are yellow and some are purple. What type of variation is this? Okay, and suggest a genetic explanation for this pattern of variation. So immediately, you already know that some kernels are yellow and some are purple. It's qualitative. There's a quality here. It's non-measurable. You don't say which one has more color and which one has less color, or which one is more purple and which one is less purple, or which is more yellow and which is less yellow. You just ask the question, which is yellow and which is purple? Number two, it's distinct because the purple kernels are obviously very different from the yellow kernels. So there is no such thing as yellow with a bit of purple, purple with a bit of yellow. There's no such thing like that. It's either only yellow or purple. Therefore, there are no intermediates in this case, and this is discontinuous. Now, suggest a genetic explanation. I did not include that in, but if a question asks you to suggest a genetic explanation for this pattern of variation in color, you just have to say that there is only one gene that affects the kernel color. Number two, you just have to say that the environment, the environment do not affect the color of the kernels. That's good enough. So I hope you understand the differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation.